Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you the latest chart action that Galgatron has put together. It shows, well, it's got a number of charts, but uh, the first one I'm going to show you has to do with actual transactions as they occur on the uh, XRP ledger relating to uh, their size relative to the United States dollar. And uh, I'm going to show you with the other one I always like to show you guys when he does these updates is uh, the number of account activations, new wallets that are actually activated on the XRP ledger. And it's on the, it's on the increase. That's good. <laughs> so I'll be showing, sharing that with you. And also, there was, um, there's a congressman stating on, uh, on CNBC that uh, governments can't kill Bitcoin. And uh, th that happened today. And so that was tweeted, tweeted out by uh, Squawk Box CNBC. And it turned into a, a fun debate between Galgatron and uh, somebody else that's uh, presumably sounded like might be a Bitcoin maximalist regardless. The, the two have completely different opinions on whether or not the government could ever shut down Bitcoin. And I enjoyed reading through it. And the, the reason I like to highlight stuff like this and I'm going to read through is because you get to hear two people on completely opposing sides in a particular topic pertaining to cryptocurrency. In this case, uh, Bitcoin and XRP is brought up in it too, a little bit. And um, and you get to hear firm opinions from two people that disagree with each other, and um, and then you get to form your own opinion. That's that's how I you know seriously back and forth like this over the last year and eight months that I've been involved in the cryptocurrency world. This is the type of thing that helped me to form my opinion, especially early on when I knew pretty much nothing. But it's still genuinely fascinating to read through stuff like that and, and get opposing views. Because my stance on everything, like I've said before on the channel, is there's no way I'm right about everything. I don't think I'm right about everything, and I always reserve the right to change my opinion. And by constantly staying um, in, in touch with what's going on in these communities uh, and actual developments, you can see how things unfold. And there's always an opportunity that as I learn new things, my opinions on things can change. Um, I've looked into enough of this that I, I pretty much have a, a pretty firm opinions on a, on a, on a host of topics uh, relating to cryptocurrency, especially XRP. But nonetheless, this is a this is a fun exercise in critical thinking, and I like engaging that. So I'm going to share with you the back and forth after I share with you the charts, and then I'll share my opinions on that. And that's the bulk of what I'm going to cover in this particular video. So let's start breaking it down here. All right, so here's a tweet from Galgatron. It was earlier this morning. He stated, latest charts, remittance-sized payments are unfazed by the market massacre. P pretty clear sign that there's considerable genuine utility. And this is, again, directly on the XRP ledger. And so the one that he's citing specifically here is if you look at the yellow line, and this goes for over a span of six months, it's remittances and payments between uh, 10 and less than 500 U United States dollars. Now, the reason that this is of particular importance, especially in the way that uh, Ripple is helping the XRP ecosystem and helping XRP to actually be adopted in a real-world way, is because with, the, with their X-Rapid technology... Uh, they're, they're looking for, uh, basically they're looking to dominate remittance corridors first. They're looking for what they keep calling the low-hanging fruit. And so when you look at corridors, uh, the ones that they're really targeting right now, specifically uh, payments rails from the United States to the Philippines, they're targeting that. And, uh, and and from the United States to Mexico, uh, they're they're targeting that, and that's where they've got their X Rapid partners. And so, you can look you can look uh, on the actual ledger and see the transactions that are occurring. And if you understand what size remittances would typically be if they went through traditional means like uh, Western Union or MoneyGram, you know, obviously MoneyGram is going to be utilizing X Rapid, which is major, huge, awesome news. But even prior to that, you you already know like the type the size of uh, the transactions that were going through. Uh, being, being transacted just by traditional means, utilizing Nostra Vostra accounts. And so when you see that type of activity continue amidst volatility with the rest of the crypto world, that's where you can start to say, okay, this looks like a pretty clear sign. And that's what Galgatron's saying here. It looks like a pretty clear sign that there's considerable genuine utility, as he phrased it. And it's 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 quite fascinating. It's just, it's just amazing. So that's why it's really cool seeing them go after the low-hanging fruit, as they keep calling it here. Um, let me scroll down here to the wallet portion of it, and you can take a look at this. Uh, these, this chart shows XRP successful account activations daily, and this is over a six-month span. And uh, if you're not driving, you can look at the screen here, and you can see where I'm circling right here. Uh, this is, what is this, mid-May? Yeah, roughly mid-May. You can see it really did ramp up the uh, the account activations during this period. That's when there was a lot more um, hype in crypto in general. And then it did kind of level off, but look at this account activations still on the incline. So price price will do what it does, but there are more actors entering the space. 
And uh, this is evidence of that. It's it's not like it's on the decline. It's literally on the incline. So price action, it can do what it wants. Speculators can buy and they can panic sell and all that good stuff. I don't care. <laughs> because the, uh, the XRP is slowly, very gradually actually being adopted. And this is just another metric that you can look at to actually verify that. All right. So uh, good news. And I'll always update. For as long as Galgatron she keeps uh, putting these updates out, anytime I notice them, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, because this is a real world view of what's actually happening on the XRP ledger right now. So I think that's really cool stuff. Uh, now let me hop into this. This is the other thing I cited at the beginning of the video that I wanted to talk about. So this is tweeted out by Squawkbox, CNBC. And the, the, the tweet says, I think there's no capacity to kill Bitcoin, says Patrick McHenry, a congressman here. And he's the one that's on the right in the video. And there's a video clip that went on for two and a half minutes. I'll link below in case you want to want to watch this. But basically his stance is, uh, you, you know, Bitcoin's been around for a decade. This is a congressman. So you can see Rep Representative Patrick McHenry. He said it's been around for a decade. And he's like, you know, China can't kill it. He said things like that. And then uh, the person that was um, in conducting the interview with him here uh, he kept pressing him, and he said, well, what if uh, what if the government bans Bitcoin? What will that do? And he said, well, you're not going to be able to kill it. You might be able to push it into the, the dark web and or something tantamount to the dark web is essentially what he was saying. And uh, but you just you just can't you can't it can't go away. It's been tested for a decade. That's basically the gist of what he was saying. And then he was he went on to talk about how Libra, Facebook's Libra coin is trying to mimic what uh, what Bitcoin is doing. But it is fundamentally different, of course, because that can be re regulated. There is a central point of failure, despite the fact that they, uh, you know, they have a five-year plan to make it completely decentralized. <laughs> we'll see if they can pull that off, because it is backed by fiat currencies, and I don't know how you get away from that. But, uh, but, but, but that was the stance. And so they're fundam he's fundamentally saying there's a difference between Bitcoin and what all the other coins are doing, essentially, especially Libra, as it can be regulated. So then uh, Galgatron chimed in on this. And here's what he wrote. Look at the map in this link and try to tell me that uh, the U.S. banning Bitcoin means it will be accepted everywhere else in the world. The U.S. banning Bitcoin will destroy its market value and no local Bitcoins will change that. And then somebody else responded. Uh, John Task responded. Visually, you can see the importance of the U.S. market. And then Jay Filmer jumped in. Now, this is the guy, he and Galgatron, they, these are the two that are going to be going back for the rest, back and forth for the rest of the thread, really. Jay Filmer. So he's a very pro-Bitcoin guy, and he thinks it can't be, uh, can't be taken down. Galgatron has a different review, which you're going to get the specifics on right now. Uh, so I'm going to share that with you. I'll share what I think, and I'm curious what you think as well once you've heard both sides of this. All right, so Jay starts off. The thing is, even if the U.S. banned Bitcoin outright, it would be little more than a setback for Bitcoin as a whole. It will still exist. It will still be used elsewhere. The supply will still lessen over time, and it will still be deflationary, Galgatron responds. And it will be worthless because nobody will bother with it. Jay responds to that. Why? Why would people suddenly not bother with it just because the United States is out? Why would that change everyone else's attitude or usage at all? I remember when China clamped down on it, everyone said it would kill Bitcoin, and everything basically carried on just fine. And Galgatron responded, how about actually taking a look at the map contained in this link? And then he puts the link there. If the United States drops out, Bitcoin will collapse because uh, uh, the other regulation-compliant coins will prosper. And then Jay responds, what? Like Libra? And Galgatron responded, or XRP. And for those of you that don't know, Galgatron is uh, definitely, I'd classify him as an XRP bull, certainly. <laughs> um, he is not somebody that is pro XRP just for the sake of it, not for ideological reasons, not for any hype reasons. Uh, it's, it's based on fundamentals. And that's why I really appreciate the way in which um, he's, he's described recently his investment strategy. It's, it really is purely uh, based on, on fundamentals and where he sees actual adoption taking place. And I am exactly the same way. Anyway, so then Jay responded, the thing is, neither XRP or Libra will remove what draws people to Bitcoin in the first place. They're a different proposition entirely. And Galgatron responds, what draws people to Bitcoin is the prospect of making money. If Bitcoin becomes illegal, that prospect disappears. And that's a fair point. I, you know, you're talking about, uh, first of all, I mean, there's a store of value proposition, but people are just trying to trade it and make some money. There's a ton of that going on, right? That's, that's a Captain Obvious type statement there. And then, uh, anyway, Jay responds to that. It doesn't, though, because for every other country, it's not illegal and nothing has changed. And Galgatron responds, 
damn it, dude, it's not every other country. <clears throat> I keep trying to get you to look at the map to show you that it's not every other country. The countries that support Bitcoin are a minority. <laughs> and Jay responds to that. I've looked at the map, and it's not about support. All Bitcoin needs is a permissive stance. And even then, a ban in China hasn't really stopped it. And regardless, plenty of countries there uh, there that uh, are fine with Bitcoin. Galgatron responds to that. Without the United States, Bitcoin will collapse. And Jay responds, but why though? I've still not heard a coherent reason why. And I think we're getting into the meat of it here now. So Galgatron responds to that. It's where the vast majority of its market value is derived from. Take away all the American exchanges, oh, and uh, there will be a fraction of the trading volume left. Even more important is that other coins that are regulatory compliant will fill the void. And by the way, XRP, baby, right? And he actually does get into it, so I'm not going to jump too far ahead, but absolutely. So anyway, Jay responds to that. We're going around in circles. Are you really? Because he just made a really solid point there. All right, whatever. So he says, we're going around in circles. Firstly, if the trading volume is lower, that doesn't equal dead. Bitcoin will still gain users elsewhere and will still be deflationary. Secondly, as explained already, the coins of which you speak aren't the same proposition at all. And uh, Galgatron responds, nope. If it loses top spot, uh, it will tailspin out. And there's a link to, uh, to, to his blog there. And I'm going to link to this whole thread, so if you want to check that out, I highly encourage it. Galgatron has some very insightful blogs. He's a real sharp guy. Anyway, Jay responded to that. Well, if something else that actually serves the same purpose becomes more popular, then sure, its market cap will dive compared to whatever else is popular. But that's got little to do with the U.S. banning it, which is what we're talking about. Galgatron responds to that. It is what we're talking about, because if Bitcoin gets banned and other coins don't, then those coins will replace Bitcoin. Ding, ding, ding. And by the way, this is all a hypothetical thing. I don't know that anybody actually thinks either. I don't know if either of them really thinks that Bitcoin will be banned. But uh, it's still a fun exercise in, like, uh, uh, hypothetically what would occur. All right, and then somebody else named LN jumped in here. I don't know who that is, but he, he writes, If Bitcoin gets banned, best assume the crypto market will be banned uh, with it as well. I find it hard to believe a positive scenario for any other coin given a negative narrative to Bitcoin, especially with its unique offering. I firmly disagree with that. And Galgatron responded to that. Um, that flies directly in the face of everything that regulatory friendly coins have been striving for. While Bitcoin was fiendishly avoiding any culpability for the crimes it enabled. Uh, XRP has been working with regulators from the beginning. And to be clear, when he's talking about Bitcoin doing something or XRP doing something, he's talking about those those uh, entities, those individuals that are cheerleaders for both. Of course, he understands that XRP itself is not some entity that can make deals. So just to be clear there, just the way he worded that. And uh, Jay responded to that. Hence why people who like Bitcoin don't want it. XRP cannot take Bitcoin's place. It just can't. And if you don't understand why then that's your curse, <laughs> which is a funny way to word that. As for Libra, uh, that's even further away from what draws people to Bitcoin. And Galgatron responds, and this is where it, uh, it, it just about ends here. He writes, you don't understand. Bitcoin will be forced to cooperate with regulators just like XRP already does. The people that don't like XRP are really not going to like what Bitcoin becomes, right? And so... Uh, and, and oh, here's one final comment. It's like one sentence from Jay. LOL, it is what it is. You can't turn it into a centralized coin or dollar backed stable coin, which I don't think anybody was proposing anyway. So, uh, <laughs> what I think on this, first of all, I I don't I don't think the United States is going to ban Bitcoin. I, I really don't. I'd be super surprised if that happened. In the short term, it would be very bad, and there would be some people that would perhaps never want to let it go. But uh, price wise, and for a lot of other reasons, like, uh, like well, in terms of price, let me say that first. It would be negative, right? I think that's that's pretty clear, and a lot of the uh, the volume would would dry up. But you know what I look at when I'm considering what would happen when it looks like that. It's more like for me, uh, which which coins reasonably would have would have staying power? Because this doesn't mean if this were to happen, it doesn't mean that it's the end of cryptocurrencies. No, no, no. Um, I firmly believe that that those uh, those decentralized cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, especially if they're being built on and uh, just by re responsible uh, developers, this or that, and there's there's nothing weird. Like I'm, I have concerns for privacy coins; those ones would. Concern. I've talked about that. I don't want to rehash it. But uh, those ones, I I can definitely see long term adoption here because there's genuine value to all value to all of this, and you, you just you can't make it go away. 
And so, you know, it's as far as the argument of whether or not it's going to happen, I don't know, like I said, that any of them think it's going to happen. It's more like, what if this doomsday style of situation occurred and Bitcoin were actually banned within the United States? What would the fallout look like? And uh, I do think that Bitcoin would go by the wayside. That that I do think. Um, soon, soon, I mean, I already think it's likely, I think it's quite possible that uh, a coin like XRP that should receive adoption through actual utility, I think that could dethrone Bitcoin even without that occurring. But certainly, if a coin is... Uh, no longer, um, no longer like legally to be either held or traded or or mined in the United States. Yeah, that would definitely affect it. But um, that's why it's just a fun hypothetical because I just can't imagine that happening. Because even though Bitcoin and XRP use different technology to solve the double spin problem, you know, there's mining, there's proof of work for Bitcoin, and then there's a consensus mechanism on XRP. They're still both, in many ways, similar. Uh, you know, they're decentralized cryptocurrencies, and I don't know how you would ban one without banning the other, frankly. I would love to hear an argument on that. So, again, I don't think this is likely, but even so, um, you know, even uh, Steve Mnuchin, um, yesterday, he, he, he stated, he acknowledged that they, uh, you know, the White House uh, and government at large, of course, they they are parsing these things out, and they are looking at various cryptocurrencies um, differently, they're considering various metrics when determining which coins are what was something a currency, is it a security? And so that's where we're at with that. Um, next piece here, this is, a, this is from Cointelegraph.com, and I just like the, <laughs> I like the headline here. It's uh, major altcoins rally as Bitcoin sees slight, decline, slight gains. And I'm not going to read this, but they go on to talk about how XRP went up 9%. And I don't think that this is some major rally, this is some short-term action, but We've been talking recently about how many uh, analysts out there are are predicting uh, alt season is about here, and I have covered some of that. And I'm not a technical a technical analysis guy. I just like to cover what other people put out there because I don't know what I'm talking about on that front. I know all sorts about Ripple and XRP and other developers building on top of the ledger, but when it comes to making predictions and price analysis, uh, that's not my thing. It's never going to be. So, uh, but there's a lot to be said. There's a lot of analysts out there that think, yeah, with Bitcoin dominance being what there is, <clears throat> if history repeats itself, you're going to have a major altcoin rally. But <clears throat> I, I don't think that based on what we've seen today, that's an indication specifically that, yeah, it's here. So it's just kind of funny to read this headline from Cointelegraph. Uh, last thing I want to mention here, uh, this is a tweet from Rand Nooner, and he writes, confirmed the golden debate, Peter Schiff and Anthony Pompliano Airing date, July 31st on CryptoTrader. So Rand Nooner, he's the host of CNBC's CryptoTrader. And Peter Schiff is a gold bug. Anti-Bitcoin, Anthony Pompliano. He's the co-founder of Morgan Creek Digital, and he's very pro-Bitcoin. He actually recently announced that over half of his net worth is in Bitcoin specifically. Not just cryptocurrencies, but Bitcoin itself. And so they're going to have a lively debate, no doubt, and I look forward to seeing that. So I thought I'd just let you know that's on the way, and I'll have thoughts on that once I get to see it. But get you popcorn ready. But Pompliano responded to uh, the, the Rand Nooner tweet, and he wrote, uh, Peter better bring his A game because you know that I'll have that fire with me. And Peter Schiff responded, and I love this. <laughs> it just made me laugh. I don't need my A game for a Bitcoin debate. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Getting sassy and spicy, Mr. Schiff. I like it. All right. <laughs> I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.